Hello. For, for this exercise, you'll be needing some materials to actually go along, like the pencil that would assist you in um, doing all your drawings, the eraser for cleaning in case of any error, the ruler to make uh, straight lines and um, transparent paper on which most of our works will be done. You'll also need the log log graph sheet. This would help us in plotting the field data. You need a master curve, very very important. You need the auxiliary curves, also very important. And um, you need a calculator to make basic calculations. Once you have all this, you are set to go along with this uh, tutorial course. And um, you also need the table, of course, and your heart and mind to be able to follow along. Transparent sheet for this exercise. Place your log log graph sheet on the table. And before you continue, I'd like to tell you that the vertical axis for your log log sheet stands for the apparent resistivity, while the horizontal axis serves as a the current electrode spacing which is a B over 2. The few that I will be working with is as shown on the right hand side of the screen. And um, bring your transparent sheet, place it gently on the log log graph sheets and rule out the border as shown. Be careful about ruling your border. And then take off your log log sheet in order to view the transparent sheet properly just should look like this then you label as follows 1, 10 and 100 also on the x-axis 10, 100, 1000 or you can label anyhow you want to but make sure you abide by the rules you can see they are all in circle so depending on your choice of scale you can organize yours the way you want to so having said all this See you in the next lesson. Choice of skill for my graph here because of the data I'm working with. And uh, you can also do yours if you're interested in doing that. And there's something I want to bring to your notice. Plotting on the log log graph sheet is a bit different from plotting on the normal graph we're used to in our secondary school days. That is the linear graph. Uh, for this, if you look closely, you have circles of tens. From ten, you have hundred, then you have a thousand, and in between all these, there are minor axes. The major axes are in tens, and the minor axes, and these minor axes are being uh, calibrated in a form such that it could be in uh, two units and at times it could be in a single unit and at times it could be in five units when it's in five units you have just a, a minor axis between two major axes and when you have about uh, ten minor axes you should know it's in single one but the more you practice the more you know it anyway just try and plot yours you should look like this at the end of the day see you in the next lesson I would want us to draw a smooth curve through our data point. Very good. And uh, I think at this point we need to bring in our master curve in order to start the journey of getting out our key one. Where is my master curve? Now you please eat gently such that the line of your border is parallel to the vertical line on the master curve and also check out the curve that fits into part of your curve I've seen mine and it fits it up to here I've marked it now I'll check the value of the curve and the value seem to be 2 I'll make a cross on the origin and then go to my auxiliary curve to trace out that value of 2 which is corresponding to this very curve it's very important so here is my auxiliary curve and all I need to do here is just to trace out the value of 2 starting from the origin 
just like this yes just trace it out gently aha uh -huh. very good so when I take off my auxiliary curve my transparent paper should look like this you have your k1 equals 2 make sure you write it there in order not to forget the value of the k this is how your transparent sheet should look like so now we'll continue matching the other part of our curve that's why it's called partial curve matching I'll place it on my master curve again check out the part of the theoretical curve that matches with my field points I've gotten this I'll mark it and then check out the value of that curve and this is a 1.5 I'll cross the origin and then put my k2 equals 1.5 then I'll take my transparent sheet back to the auxiliary curve and then place the k2 cross on the origin and look out for the curve for 1.5 and then trace it out from the origin like we did for the first k so you need to be very careful in tracing out your curves too and also make sure that the curve is passing through the origin very very important yes like that so your transpiration should look like this see you in the next lesson seem more like an ultimate search right yes k3 here we we'll come we're getting out our master curve again just like the traditional way and then trying to match the remaining parts of our curve somewhere here with the better so i'm gonna put my cross at the origin and the curve seemed to me to be seven yeah k3 equals seven and then in order to fulfill a righteousness i would take the sheet back to the auxiliary curve to trace out the curve of seven so the previous traced out curve should pass through the origin your cross should be at the origin and the line should be parallel to and trace this out okay yeah now you can take this off to see what your sheet looks like so as a transparent sheet this is what it should look like we are free from finding our keys see you in the next lesson this morning when i woke up i had my devotion brushed my teeth took my bath, and um, i ate my breakfast but why am i saying this i, I don't know <laughs> maybe because i just want to <laughs> so let's go to the business we're looking for dndr to get your dndr you place your first cross on the origin and you read off the value closer to the second cross in this case the value down to this curve closer to my k2 is 2 yeah you can see the curve in that box so my dndr one would now be 1.9 because the cross is not actually on that curve of 2 but very very close to it so 1.9 is close to 2 that's why I would make it 1.9 you can just highball it yours could be lower than that and uh, to get the second one you put the k2 on the origin and read off the value of the curve that is close to k3 and in this case if you look closely the value falls on uh, 7 yes this is 7 here so the value of the box for the k3 of the 7 so therefore my dndr2 would be 7 so it's time to calculate the layer resistivity and thickness but if you look closely you would see that one of our cross that is the first cross for k1 is outside the graph sheet 
and it's recommended for this I'll readjust the position of my transparent sheet just like this okay and then when I read off the value of the K1 down towards the X axis I would have the thickness of the first layer and when I read it off to the left hand side towards the Y axis I would have the resistivity value for the first layer but when it comes to K2 and K3 I wouldn't be having the layer resistivity and thicknesses but row 2 replacement and H2 replacement the same thing goes for K3 so I wouldn't look for this for you since you have the basic knowledge of what you are meant to do so get out the row 2 replacement and H2 now it's time for calculations and don't be scared they are just uh, little ones though and this is the formula that we'll be using for the calculation row 2 equals row 1 times k1 row 3 equals row 2 replacement times k2 row 4 equals row 3 replacement times k3 if you have row 5 in your case row 5 will be equal to row 4 replacement and k4 and so on and so forth and the same thing applies to the h1 h2 h3 h4 2 so from our results so far we have our row 1 to be equal to 32 ohms while k1 is 2 row 2 replacement is 42 ohms while k2 is 1.5 row 3 replacement is 58 ohms while k3 is 7 h1 equals uh, 0 0.95 h2 replacement is 2.9 then the r1 is 1.9 and the NDR2 is 7 so I like arranging my this way because it makes my calculation very easy so let's go on to the calculation row 2 equals row 1 times k1 which gives us 64 row 3 equals row 2 replacement times k2 which gives us 63 row 4 equals row 3 replacement times k3 which gives us 4 0, 6. for h2 that is the thickness of the second layer that equals h1 times the ndr1 which gives 1.81 the thickness of the third layer equals h2 replacement times the ndr2 so the result from the product of these parameters gives the layer resistivity of layer 1 as 32 ohms the resistivity of layer 2 as 64 ohms the resistivity of layer 3 as 63 ohms the resistivity of layer 4 as 406 ohms while the thickness of layer 1 is 0 0.95 meter thickness of layer 2 is 1.81 meters and 3 is 20.3 meters so we'll see in the next lesson